Hello all, welcome back to another session of our YT Live. So guys, how are you guys? So welcome back, how are you? Please join to the YT Live session of our uh, uh, discussion. So nice to meet you all of you once again. So very good morning to all of you. So guys, how are you? How the, how the things are going on? Is it fine? So our September month is almost going to end and uh, from October, that is October, you have only two months in your hands and guys, this is your time to prepare very well. Okay, so this is your time to prepare very well. So guys, what to do is revise all the things. Join our YT live session every day, frequently. If you can't join, then watch our live, YT live sessions. Watch the conceptual videos I am adding. I am uploading in the YT live, in the YouTube channel, YT channel, and it will help you to revise, remember, recollect all the things. And it will add. If you need any extra points from that uh, word, videos, you can add it from my videos also. And so, guys, let's start. Let's start. So today's our topic is about Francis Bacon. Sorry, Ben Johnson. Sorry, not Francis Bacon. About Francis Bacon, I will discuss you in later. Today's topic is Ben Johnson, right? Today's topic is Ben Johnson. So how Ben Johnson? How Ben Johnson? What? granted his place or mass during the Elizabethan age. So sorry, so that's why we are going to discuss Ben Johnson's place. Okay. So Ben Johnson's place, guys, we have loads of Ben Johnson's place. I have added only two, three, that is uh, around uh, six place, but these are the most important most major plays of Ben Johnson. So we have Walpone or the Fairfax. Walpone or the Fairfax. That is a play by Ben Johnson. And we have The Alchemist. So very important play. Very important play. And repeatedly NT is asking from. NT is asking from The Alchemist. And next is Every Man in His Humor. That is Every Man in His Humor. And next one is very important, Bartholomew Fair. Okay, Bartholomew Fair. So very important play. That is Bartholomew, Bartholomew Fair. And next is Tale of a Tub. Okay, Tale of a Tub. Tale of a Tub is another important play of Ben Johnson. And Eastward Ho. Eastward Ho is very important, disputed and good mysterical play of Ben Johnson. Okay, mysterical play. So, that is, these are the plays of Ben Johnson, the important plays, not only the plays, the important plays of Ben Johnson. So, coming about Ben Johnson's most important, one of the most important plays, that is Walpole. Okay, that is Walpole. So, Walpone or the fox or fair fox is a satirical comedy. So it is a satirical comedy or satirical play written by the famous playwright Ben Johnson during the Elizabethan age and Jacobian age. And it revolves around the character Walpone, a wealthy and cunning man who feigns illness to trick who feigns illness to trick his acquaintances into believing he is dying. So this play is performed in 1606. Very important year. This play is performed in 1606. Alright. 1606. And what about this play? And this play is about a wealthy cunning man who is feeling who is feigns illness to trick the acquaintance that he is going to die. And he encourages, what does he encourage? He encourages them to shower him with gifts 
and favors all in the hope of being named in as his heir in his will that is after his death one will get all the wealth and properties of this wealthy man and for that purpose that purpose only the acquaintance gave him for the wealthy and what costly gift before he is dying so main themes of walpole we can see greed and deception as a themes in as themes in this play how greed and deception the central theme of the play is the insatiable the insatiable greed of the characters and their willingness to deceive and manipulate others to to achieve what to achieve their desires the wall pawn pretends what to be on the brink of on the brink of death to exploit what the greed of his friends and accumulate what and accumulate a wealth without actually giving anything to anything in return so that is why this play is concerned with greed and deception all right next next one is what next one is the role of money how the role of money sorry yeah this one right yeah how the role of money plays in this work okay how the role of role of money plays in this work so how the role how the money money is a powerful motivator right money is a powerful motivator and what and what and corrupts the character's morals and values so money what does this money means money is a powerful motivator in this play and it corrupts the character's morals and values in this play and it derives them to commit immoral and unethical acts so this money what this money drives them to commit immoral and unethical acts in their pursuit of wealth so that's why the role of money so the role of money is just like to commit drives the members to commit immoral and unethical acts in order to gain the wealth okay social satire it is a social satire how it is called a social satire that is johnson uses wall porn johnson uses word wall porn as a satire as the venetian society of his time so he satires or he mimics or he ridicules the venetian society during his time as well as human nature in general so the common follies of humans and what the venetian society the venetian society during his time so he exposes the hypocrisy selfishness and moral decay of the character so in this play ben johnson exposes or what reflects the hypocrisy the selfishness and moral decay how morality is decaying of in from this characters and highlighting the flaws of society so the flaws of society is highlighted in this word in this work right so the flaws of society is what the flaws of society is depicted or satirized or criticized through this work all right then mask and disguises we can see wearing some while the performance from while it is performed we can see the mask use of mask and so many disguises changing of what personality dress such kind of things so the play the play features the characters who use mask and disguises so the play features what the characters 
to use mask and disguises both literally and figuratively so both literally and figuratively we can see the characters who uses both mask and disguising okay then this motive understands word underscores the theme of deception this motive underscores word the theme of deception okay the theme of deception and word and the idea that people often with often wear masks to hide their true intention so wearing that mask means people are always people are always wearing a mask to hide their true intention so that's why this work is called as a mask or we can see the usage of mask here literally literally and figuratively all right then the next is fool as a voice reason so we can see the character fool here fool as a voice reason the mosca Walpole's clever and convincing, sorry, con, con, that is cunning servant or cunning, cunning servant, that is cunning servant, right? So, we have Walpole's, Walpole is a fox, okay, Walpole is a fox. So, we have Walpole's cunning and clever servant, uh, word Mosca and often takes on the role of the wise fool so he often takes the role of a wise fool so mosca is very cunning and very what very clever who is a servant of walpole okay and he uses his wit and intelligence to manipulate the other characters and advance the plot so what he uses the what his wit mosca's wit and intelligence to manipulate the other characters and adv advance the plot so that is fool as a why sorry voice of reason all right so what is the resolution of this drama what is the resolution of this wall pot? resolution is at the end of the play justice is served okay at the end of the play justice is served and the characters are exposed for their deceptions so the characters are exposed for their deception so at the end of the play justice is served okay justice is served and the characters are exposed for their deceptions so we can see Walpon, mosca and the other schemers face punishment for their action so that is the resolution of this play so guys please note that the characters in this play the theme of this play okay then ben johnson's next most granted play is the alchemist alchemist okay Ben Johnson's next most exhibited and granted play is The All Chemist. So, it is a Jacobian comedy play written in 1610. See, in 1603, Elizabeth dies, right? So, then we have the Jacobian era or what? The post Elizabethan period. So, in, during that period only, Ben Johnson performed his plays. Ben Johnson wrote his plays. So, this play is written in 16, 1610 and considered of his most famous works. So, the play revolves around a group of corn artists who use alchemy as a friend for their various scams and schemes. So, they how to do they have to do various scams and what various scams and such kind of schemes so in order to cover their scams and schemes they use alchemy okay so it is a satirical comedy it is a satirical comedy again and explores themes of deception greed gullibility while providing a humorous commentary 
on society of its time. See Ben Johnson's comedies. That is Ben Johnson's satires are or masks are the reflection, the comic reflections of that society. Alchemy is a metaphor. Okay, here the word alchemy is used as a metaphor. How? The play uses the pseudoscience of alchemy as a metaphor for the deceit and greed of the characters. For the deceit and greed of the characters. Just as alchemist claimed just as what alchemists claimed to turn base materials, claim to turn base materials, base metals into gold, the characters in the play aim to turn lies and deception into riches. So that is alchemy as a metaphor. How? Just as alchemists claimed to turn base metals into gold, the characters in the play aim to turn lies and deceit into riches. So that is alchemy. Okay. Then, satire of gullibility. First theme is satire of gullibility. That is, Johnson satirizes the gullibility of people who are willing to believe in the, promise, in the promises of alchemy and the quick fix schemes presented by what presented by the corn artist. So, gullibility means Johnson satirizes the gullibility of people and who are willing, those who are willing to believe in the promises of alchemy and the quick fix of schemes presented by the corn artist. So, we can see some corn artists here. I will tell you the names of corn artists. So, these are the corn artists. Please note the names of corn artists. That is what the central characters are. One is Subtle. Okay. So, Subtle is a character in Ben Johnson's Alchemist. Alright. So, Subtle is the alchemist here. So, who is the alchemist Alchemist in this play? Subtle. Okay. Then, we, we can see another corn character that is Face. That is who? Face. So, Face is the housekeeper in this alchemist. So, in this alchemist. So, Face. Another character, another corn character is Face. Right? Another corn character is Face. Right? Hello, Shivani. Very good morning. Where were you? Yeah, Shivani. Today's topic is today's topic is uh, Ben Johnson's plays, and we saw Ben Johnson's one play that is what I'll show you the slides. Before alchemy, we saw Ben Johnson's. Which play? Tell me guys. Right? That is what? Walpond the Fairfax. So, Walpond the Fairfax. After Walpond the Fairfax, we are, going, we are discussing about Ben Johnson's another play. That is the alchemist. That is what? The alchemist. Okay. Then. So, we saw the themes, a short introduction about alchemist and the, we are discussing the theme of, we were discussing the theme about the themes of alchemist and now I am explaining about the corn artist in the drama, in the play. Okay, no problem Shivani, keep going. Okay, so thank you for joining, keep watching. Okay. So, the three con characters, right? So the three con characters. The central character of the play are Subtle, the alchemist 
and Faith is the housekeeper of Sutton. And we can see Doll Common. Doll Common is a prostitute here. So we can see a prostitute in this play. Her name is Doll Common. Okay. And they have worked together to call various gullible victims. So they are working together. The subtle face, doll common, both of three are working together to keep, okay, uh, to do various gullible, okay, to call various gullible victims by promising them wealth and happiness through alchemy. So they promises them, they promise them you will get, you will get wealth and prosperity through alchemy. All right. Then, the character foils, that is the character foils. How are the character foils applicable in this play? The play features a variety of characters, right? The play features what? Variety of characters, uh, sorry, from different social classes so we can say such a doll common phase they are including different we <coughs> sorry <coughs> sorry so different various strata of society and including a puritan we can see a puritan here a nobleman here a tobacco that is a tobacconist here and others also. The so Puritan, nobleman, tobacconist, prostitute, housekeeper, right, alchemist. So these characters serve as foils to highlight the different aspects of human nature and society. So that is the importance of the characters in alchemist. Okay. Then, comic elements in alchemist. Comic elements in alchemists means it is a comedy. Basically, it is a comedy, comedy play or comedy play or satirical play. And it contains, it contains what? It contains the elements of farce. Okay, elements of farce, wit and humor. Johnson use of, Johnson's use of clever wordplay. Johnson's use of clever wordplay absurd situations and exaggerated characters and contributed to the comedic tone of the play. So that is all for the fair, sorry, that is the alchemist. All right. So, next work is A Man and His Humor by Ben Johnson. Okay, so a man in his humor is a first is first performed in fifteen ninety eight. Very important thing. It is first a man in his humor. It is first performed in fifteen ninety eight, and is one of Johnson's earliest works. It is what it is one of Johnson's earliest works and the play is known for its character driven humor and satire of contemporary social mores so the play is driven for what the play is driven for the character what character driven okay the play is driven for the character driven humor and satire of contemporary social mores all right so it is a notable work it is what it is a notable work in ben johnson's array and in the broader context of english renaissance drama and it is offering a satirical examination of human behavior and social conventions of its time so it explains what is it explains what the satirical examination of human behavior and the social conventions of its time of his time. So that is a man in his humor. Okay. So the plot, 
the plot of this play what is the plot of this play the play is set in london so what is the setting of this play this play is set in the man in his humors right the man in his humors the city set that is the setting us in London and it revolves what it revolves around the lives and interactions of various characters. It revolves around what the lives and interactions of various different what various characters from different social classes from different social classes. All right. It primarily focuses on, what does it primarily focuses on? It primarily focuses on the lives of well-bred. It primarily focuses on what? The lives of well-bred, a traveler and Kitli. Kitli. So, we can see what well-bred, a traveler and Kitli as characters. And the other characters are? what a merchant and their respective families okay so the main focused characters are well-bred a traveler and hitley well-bred traveler and who and a hitley okay which primarily focuses on the lives of those characters so characters, what about the characters in this play? Comedy in his, a man in his humours. So Johnson's characters are named after their predominant humour or characteristic trait. Okay, so Johnson's characters are named after his predominant humour and characteristic trait. According to which characteristic trait he is or the man is possessing, then that is that that is according to that night the man possess possess. So which was a common literary convention in his time. So that was a common literary convention. That to a convert convent that is common literary convention in his time. So for example, Hitley is jealous by nature. So the man is the person is jealous by nature. Italy is very jealous by his nature and his name reflects his. So, Kitli, his name reflects that jealousy. Other characters include Captain Bobadil. So, we can see other characters in this play, Captain Bobadil. So, NTA will ask, NTA will give you some character's name and they will ask, NTA ask just like, which among the play we can see this characters? So that is Bob Dill is a character in a man in, in his humor. And a braggart soldier and brain worm. So brain worm. Brain worm is already what? Brain worm. A character here. Okay. Another character is brain worm. So <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Yeah, so brain worm, sorry, sorry for the interruption. Yeah, brain worm is a character, brain worm is a character in this play, in this play. Okay, all right. And brain worm is a cunning serpent. Okay, so Bob Dill, a braggart, a braggart soldier and a, and a brain worm, brain worm is a cunning serpent. So, he is a cunning servant. Alright. Next. What about the performance of this play? So, the play was first performed by the Lord Chamberlain's men. The play was per first performed in Lord Chamberlain's men. And it is a theatrical company. So, Lord Chamberlain's men is a theatrical company. Shivani, we saw the public theatres and private theatres during that Elizabethan age, right? In the batch live, I have uh, discussed about the public theatres and private theatres during the Elizabethan age, right? Sorry. 
right yeah so this was this play was performed in performed by lord chamberlain's men and that included william shakespeare so in that lord chamberlain's men we can see the members as william shakespeare as one of its actors so william shakespeare acted a man in ben johnson's play a man in his humor very important point okay and Johnson and Shakespeare had a professional and personal relationship during this time. And this Ben Johnson and William Shakespeare were contemporaries each other. And they are contemporaries. And they had a personal relationship during this time. And William Shakespeare enacted in Ben Johnson's play, A Man in His Humor. And it was performed by Lord Chamberlain's men. Okay. So we can see a sequel, sequel to this word, sequel to this one. So that is what sequel is. Johnson wrote a sequel. Okay. So Johnson wrote a sequel to this, a man in his humor titled Every Man Out of His Humor. So a man in his humor, every man out of his humor. So, every man out of his humor is a sequel to a man in his humor that is also written by Ben Johnson and which was first performed in 1599. Okay, every man out of his humor is a sequel to a man in his humor and it is first performed in, in the year 1599. Very important. Okay. 1599 and this play continues the exploration of humors and social satire. What does this play say? The exploration, it, explo it explores the humors and social satire. Okay, so, hum so that is about what a man in his humor and every man out of his humor. All right. So, all right, Shivani. All right, Shivani. And all my viewers, those who are watching. All right. Okay, fine. So, moving on. Moving on to the next play of Ben Johnson. Okay. Next play of Ben Johnson. So that is Eastward Ho. That is what Eastward Ho. Very important play, disputed play, and it is very important as per the notion of your NTA UGC net. Okay. So Eastward Ho is a Jacobian era play. Okay, so this is a Jacobian era play written by Ben Johnson and George Chapman and John Marston. So Eastward Who is written by three writers. Along with Ben Johnson, we have George Chapman and John Marston. Very important. This is NTS previous year question. Eastward Who is written by Jacobian era playwriters by Ben Johnson, George Chapman, and John Marston. So, Marston. So, it was first performed in 1605. Okay. It was first performed in which year? 1605. All right. 1605. And this is notable for its satire of political and social issues of that time. Obviously. It is a complex and multi-layered play. So, it is a complex and what multi-layered play that reflects the social and political tension. So, that reflects what the social and political tensions of its time, of its time, while also providing entertainment, while what also providing entertainment to its comedic elements and character interactions. So that is what 
this word four. Okay, so the main thing is it is written by three playwrights: Ben Johnson, George Chapman, and John Meister. So next is its authorship dispute. So Eastwood Hall is unique because it had three authors: Ben Johnson, George Chapman, and John Meister. So the play, the play was initially intended as a collaboration between Johnson, Chapman, and Meister. Johnson and Meister. Okay. Finally, so initially this play was intended as a collaboration between what collaboration between Johnson and Chapman, but Marston was brought in later. Okay, in later we can see the name of the mentioning of the name of what Marston. Okay, so the collaboration led to disputes. So this collaboration led to disputes also. How? Collaboration led to disputes and even imprisonment due to alleged seditious content. So, this is what the collaboration led to disputes, okay, and even imprisonment due to alleged seditious content. So, that is about Eastward. So, theme is about satire of social classes. So the main theme of Eastward Who is what, what the satire of social class. So the play satirizes what the play satirizes the social classes of London. So the play satirizes what the social classes of London. So in the early 17th century, so in the early 17th century. How was the social class of during London? And it portrays the lives and antics. So it portrays what the likes, the lives and antics of different classes of what different classes of people and from the lower class characters like Patchstone and Golding to the upper class characters like Patronal Flash and Lady would be. So, very important theme. Very important point. That is the characters. So, we can see in this drama, Eastward, that is Eastward Who, right? We have Westward Who also. I will tell this in later. And Eastward, in Eastward, in Eastward Who, we can see different strata of people and the lower class characters like Touchstone. So, Touchstone is a character from Eastward Who and Golding also. Golding also. So, Touchstone and Golding are, Touchstone and Golding are what? Are what? Uh, the lower class people. And we can see Sir Petronel, Sir Petronel Flash and Lady would be, Lady would be as the upper class characters. Okay, so the lower class characters and the upper class characters. Alright, then what about the censorship and imprisonment? So, I have mentioned that this writers this play witnessed more censorship and imprisonment also why so because of its satirical content the play faced censorship and legal troubles so the authors were briefly imprisoned for the perceived seditious content in this play okay so they were released only after making revision to the script okay so they were only released after making some revisions to the script then only they became free and the play performed okay so that's that was about the eastward so guys we saw what for shivani we i will show you the slides once again we saw we saw eastward who and we saw what we saw a man in his humor and 
नेक्स्ट इज वॉट ऑल केमिस्ट बेन जॉनसन द ऑल केमिस्ट एंड फॉर द फर्स्ट वी सॉ वॉट वॉल पॉन द फेयर फॉक्स राइट वॉल पॉन द फेयर फॉक्स तो दीज आर द मेन ड्रामास ऑफ बेन जॉनसन रेस्ट ऑफ द ड्रामास ऑफ बेन जॉनसन शुड बी डिस्कस्ड in our bachelor session okay so i hope the session will help you to about about no that is will help you to know about in detail about the whole point of air facts what all chemist every man in his humor and eastward who okay so the rest of the plays we will discuss in our bachelor all right so guys that's all about today is class so once again thank you so much for participating this live session and we'll see you in the next live session with at another important chapter okay keep learning keep watching and happy learning bye guys